Hey there, this is John from Heroes in Legends. Welcome to day five of official Eldritch Moon spoilers. We have nine brand new cards to take a look at today. And as you can see on the title screen, we have at least one really big one. We finally got a look at Tamiyo. I think everyone's been clamoring for this since we knew that she was going to be in the storyline with Shadows Over in Estrad. And today's the day. We finally get to see what she does, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. So having said that, let's jump into the cards for the day. We're going to start off with just a simple token. We get an Eldrazi Horror token, and my assumption is there'll be multiple versions of this art. We've seen that in the last few sets. Wizards has done a better job of giving us more tokens, less tip cards. So that's pretty cool. But here's one version of that to look at. Now let's get on to the real cards. And we start off with a Distended Mindbender. This one costs eight. It's an Eldrazi Insect. It has an Emerge cost of two black and five generic for a 5-5. Five, five. When you cast this target opponent reveals his or her hand, you choose from it a non-land card with converted mana cost three or less and a card with converted mana cost four or greater. That player discards those cards. Now, here's what's cool about this. This is a very strong card. I mean, paying eight for it is eh, okay. But where you really want to be is paying a lot less with the emerge cost, right? Now, if you can get this down pretty early, this has the potential to rip out your opponent's hand and some of their key cards, as well as give yourself a 5-5, five five, which isn't super exciting. It doesn't have evasion, but it's not a bad ground pounder, a 5-5. Five five. It also can protect you at times. So on its own power level, I think this is a very strong card. I do think it's a little awkward right now in the current meta, and the reason I say that is a lot of decks are going relatively cheap and aggressive. I mean, you look at a lot of the white decks and the white green decks and, and even some of the like collected company builds, they do have some late game plays, but there's also a lot of really small creatures that they start off with and a lot of players are on those builds. So if I play this card, two things, if I'm on one of those style of decks trying to go super aggressive and fast, this isn't going to be great for me because it's going to take me a little while to get a creature big enough to sacrifice to this thing to cast it and make it worth my time and by that time it may already be too late and also if i'm putting this down and playing against one of those decks the second half the four greater might just whiff not always but some of the time so there's a little bit of inconsistency there Having said that, it is a very powerful card. I think somebody will find a place for it in standard, if not now, post-rotation when things shift up a little bit. And it's a fantastic card, I think, for Commander, for sure. I think it's a great card in that environment where you know folks are going to be playing a lot of variety of spells and a lot of big things will be in their hand that you'll be able to kind of strip out with a card like this. And you can probably do it pretty early on in the game. And in limited, I think it's still a good card. Again, playing this for eight, even limited isn't where you want to be, but you should have an opportunity to perhaps sacrifice a forecasting cost creature or something like that and play this card and get some decent value out of it. Next, we have a reprint. It's Peace of Mind. This was originally printed in Exodus. It got a reprint in ninth edition. It costs one white and a generic. It's an enchantment. Pay a white, discard a card, you gain three life. So this is four limited, basically. It's just another discard outlet. So if you need one, maybe you have some madness strategy or some delirium strategy going on or even some reanimation, then this card's there for you. There may be better options, to be quite honest. There's still a lot of great discard effects in this set as well as the last set, so it's probably not always going to make your cut, but if you need it, it's going to be there for you. Next, we have Collective Brutality. One black and a generic. It's a sorcery. Escalate, discard a card. Choose one or more. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose an instant or sorcery card from it. That player discards that card. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. And finally, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Now, I think there's definitely a role for this card. Let's talk about standard first. The mode that is most exciting, I think, for standard is actually the minus two, minus two mode. There's a lot of small, aggressive creatures going on. This is a card that could slow down that strategy a little bit. It is sorcery speed because it has that quasi-duress effect on there. So, of course, that's going to live at sorcery speed. Uh, it would be nice if you could in minus two, minus two something at instant speed. But nevertheless, I think it's still playable, maybe out of the sideboard, if nothing else. Having said that, I think this card is going to shine a little more in some of the bigger formats like Modern or Legacy. 
and it's not a card that every deck wants, but there are some decks that I don't think would mind playing this. And I'm thinking of things like reanimation decks. You know, in a perfect world, you'd be in a situation where maybe you could play this, use the first mode, look at your opponent's hand, take away their removal spell, discard the card you want to reanimate, and then also give something minus two minus two that could disrupt your uh, reanimation strategy like a death right shaman or a scavenging ooze right so that's magical christmas land sure but it does do a lot of things that that style of deck wants to do and because of that i want to be shocked to see this creep into that style of deck now what about limited i think this is still fine for you in limited again the minus two minus two effect may be the best part of this and it also is a discard outlet for good madness enabler or what have you. So you could get a little extra value there in limited. And I think it's also playable in commander. Maybe not every commander deck wants this. The first mode is okay, but it's not gonna replace Thought Seize or Duress in the decks that are looking to do something like that. Instead, what this card gives you is versatility. And I think that's why it will make its way into some commander decks as well. Next we have Wailing Ghoul, one black and a generic, it's a zombie, 1-3. When this enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Basically another limited card, it's fine, I mean you're still getting a 1-3 for two and that's just fine and limited, especially if you're trying to be a little more slow and controlling and methodical. It's a zombie, hopefully we'll see some more zombie matter stuff as more cards are spoiled over the course of the next week. And yeah, if you're trying to get to Delirium, this will be just fine for you. Next we have a spoiler which was from a Chinese traditional language card and it's Stromkirk Mystic, a red and two vampire horror would trample, it's a 3-2, and when this deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library until end of turn, you may play that card and its madness is a red and one. Now this is great and limited, a lot of value here I think, a 3-2 for three on its own is pretty good. This also has trample so if you have a way to buff it excellent get some extra value out of it also has madness for two so again another opportunity for value and this does what an aggressive deck wants to do and that's get in there for some damage and hopefully maybe be able to play an extra card now that won't happen all the time but hopefully a good percentage of the time you'll get a little card advantage off of it too a uh, really good card in limited in general now as far as standard goes i mean this is a very good aggressive creature and can lead to some card advantage I think there's a chance that this could find a home. It just needs to find a deck to get into. And again, it's probably gonna be contingent upon the rest of the spoilers that we see next week, if that's possible. I mean, this could play a role in a Boros aggressive deck, maybe even the vampire deck, if it could get there. I think it just needs some more lower drops that are really good for that deck. But if that happens, it's very possible. Next we have Emrakul's Evangel. Costs a green and two, three, two human horror. Tap and sacrifice this and any other non-Eldrazi creatures and then put a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi horror creature token on the battlefield for each creature sacrificed this way. This has some potential. Here's what I like about this card. You put it in play, it's relatively cheap, you get a 3-2 for three, and then next turn you can tap this and if you have a whole bunch of tokens on board, you can turn all those 1-1 one -one tokens into three twos or something like that. So this is gonna work very well if you have a deck that's going to generate a lot of tokens and go wide. The only thing that's a little awkward right now is if you're just looking at Shadows over Innistrad as well as what we know so far of Eldritch Moon, there doesn't seem to be a lot of great opportunity right now to do that. Now again, we haven't seen all of Eldritch Moon. Hopefully uh, we'll see some sort of better token generation that would work well with this card. Now as far as standard goes, could it get there? I don't know, I think it's just a little tad slow because you have to cast it and then you have to wait. Obviously you could cheat it in with Collected Company, that's an option, and then if you did that at the end of your opponent's turn, you could surprise them. So I think if it does see standard, it's gonna have to be in a Collective Company type build. But then I guess gotta ask myself, does that deck need or want this? Uh, they already have a lot of great tools. So I don't know, I guess time will tell on this one. I'm a little bit on the fence. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. But I do think the power level's there. I think it's a good card. I just don't know exactly where it will fit going forward. Next we have another reprint, it's Prey Upon. And this was originally from Innistrad. Cost a green, it's a sorcery. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. So I always felt about this card a little too inconsistent for standard. Not to say it's completely unplayable, but it is dependent on you having a creature that's bigger than what you want to destroy. And that's not always going to work out to your advantage. 
Having said that, this is fantastic and limited. You'll play this and be very happy with it most of the time. Now we have a transform card. It's Elvenwald Captive, which transforms into Elvenwald Abomination. And this is a green and one, one, two, werewolf horror with defender, and you can tap it for green mana. And if you pay two green and five, it transforms into a four, six, which you can tap for two colorless mana. And it's an Eldrazi werewolf. Let's talk about standard first. If there is a ramp deck out there that's looking for a mana dork, this could definitely be the one that they go to. Just the fact that early on it's a mana dork and then later in the game, if you need a larger creature, especially a decent defender, uh, you have the ability to just transform this and get yourself a 4-6. I mean, 4-6 isn't super exciting, but it can protect you from a lot of things. I mean, this doesn't have evasion, so it's not a very aggressive card, uh, but it's still sizable. Your opponent's gonna have to deal with it some way or another. Also, you don't lose the ability to gain mana. You can still tap this for two colorless, which helps you continue to ramp up as you go if you needed to. So I do like this. I think this could find a home in a in a ramp strategy as long as that strategy is viable in the current meta. Again, the meta is just so aggressive right now that deck really has to be able to start off quickly to do well and hang in that meta. So if this isn't something that happens right away, maybe post rotation, but I could see it eventually getting to that point. Uh, having said that, this is gonna be very good for you and limited. Nothing wrong with the Mana Dork, helps accelerate things a little bit as you go, and yeah, it's a fine blocker to deal with small creatures early on too, especially if you need to buy yourself a little bit of time to ramp into your mid-range or long-term game. All right, now here's the big card of the day, and this is the last one for the day. Tamiyo Field Researcher, a blue, a white, a green, and a generic. Planeswalker Tamiyo, this is a mythic rare, four loyalty, plus one. Choose up to two target creatures until your next turn. Whenever either of those creatures deals combat damage, you draw a card. Minus two, tap up to two target non-land permanents. They don't untap during their controller's next untap step. And minus seven, draw three cards. You get an emblem with, you may cast non-land cards from your hand without paying their mana cost. Wow, so <laughs> this is the real deal. Tamiyo looks amazing. The only thing that's maybe a tad awkward about this card is she's in colors that are already completely dominating standard. You have white and green, which have just been huge for so long now, and yet again, they're getting another tool uh, to just bolster what's already out there. Uh, but having said that, this card's incredible. Uh, it's just so versatile, and you know, read it carefully because at first glance, I don't know if everyone realizes just how versatile this thing is, but just look at the plus one. Choose up to two target creatures until your next turn. So they don't have to be your creatures, they can be opponent's creatures, and it's until your next turn. So it's a complete cycle. It's your opponent's turn. If you're playing a multiplayer game, that's everybody's turn. So this effect will last until it comes back to you. That allows you to get creative. If you have a creature with evasion that you know can get across for some damage, wonderful you choose that as one of the creatures you attack you get to draw a card and then maybe you have another creature that you know is going to attack you or you want to maybe make your opponent think twice about attacking you you put the second on that creature and the fact that she can tap to non-land permanents again not creatures but non-land permanents it's a way to at least temporarily defend herself, which will give her a little bit of length and legs and allows you to maybe get some blockers out there for her at some point. The ultimate, I think, is awesome too. Great design, basically Ancestral Recall with Omniscience. And it's not game over. It's not scoop your cards, but it probably is game over. If you ultimate her, you're probably winning, <laughs> unless you really whiff badly. <laughs> but this is incredible. Great card. Only costs four to cast. Now, granted, it's three different colors, so this isn't really a four drop. You can't look at it that way. But even so, a lot of consistent decks, I think, should be able to get this out. Maybe turn five, turn six. Still very, very good. Uh, yes, this can fit into a lot of different places and collect a company decks, the aggressive humans decks that we've been seeing, whether you're going for the green white version, splashing a little blue for this, or what have you. There's just so much you can do with this card right now, and I'm sure it can fit into a lot of other things. And I also feel that just this card existing will encourage people to brew around it and come up with at least one creative standard deck that we'll see out there. I think it's also good enough for modern. It's just a very strong card, and I think it has a reasonable price and of course the multicolors 
are a little easier to get to in, in other formats like modern uh, this is going to be huge in commander it's an amazing commander card fantastic and if you happen to open this in your pool in limited as long as you can cast her she's going to be great that's the only thing you have to worry about is making sure that you have the ability to cast her now if you're relatively heavy ish green Hopefully you'll have the tools to get there since there's a lot of ways in green to uh, search up different lands and such like and stuff like that. So yeah, fantastic card. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on it. I'm just very excited about it. And it's really cool to see Tamiyo back. We haven't seen her since the original card in Avacyn Restored. I think fans have really been clamoring for this and to really get a good look at it ever since we knew that she'd be in the story back in Shadows Over Innistrad. So here she is and uh, she didn't disappoint, I don't think. So. Having said that, those are the cards for today. As always, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, was made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality videos for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a good day.